Question 16. Regina is measuring how many solutions from batch X and batch Y are acidic. She measures a total of 100 solutions from both batches, 40% of the solutions from batch X and 70% of the solutions from batch Y were acidic for a total of 48 acidic solutions. Solving which of the following system of equations yields the number of solutions in batch X and batch Y? Okay, so for this problem, you need to extract the proper English phrases to set up the system of two equations. From the first sentence, we know that the first uh, batch of solutions, the first chemical mix is X. The second mixture is Y. In the second sentence, she, Regina says that there are 100 total. So we can write down for the first equation, the number of batches of X plus Y equals 100. So from there, we can eliminate choices one and, uh, B and C, it looks like. So it has to be A or D. Then here I used a red and blue highlighter to follow the um, different batches. So 40% of batch X and 70% of the solutions for batch Y of those, of those solution mixes, 40% of them and 70% of this group were a total of 48 solutions that turned out to be acidic. So we set up 40% times X plus 70% times Y equals 48. So for example, if it was 50 and 50, there would be 40% of 50 or 20 batches of this one and 35 bat. Does that add up to 40? It's supposed to add up to 48. Oh, right. So we don't, right. We, then we have to solve for X and Y. But it's for, if, if it was 40 and 70, then it would be 25 and 35 for a total of uh, 60 batches. So that's not the right ratio between X and Y. Okay, but um, that's the correct equation. In decimal, that is choice A, 0.4X plus 0.7Y equals 48. The correct answer was A. For question 17, Ken and Paul each ordered a sandwich at a restaurant. The price of Ken's sandwich was X dollars and the price of Paul's sandwich was a dollar more than the price of Ken's sandwich. If Ken and Paul split the costs evenly, and each paid a 20% tip, which of the following expressions represents the amount in dollars each of them paid? Assume there's no sales tax. Okay, so make like a, like you're the uh, waiter or waitress and write down while Ken's getting has to pay X and then with his information, he'll also pay a 20% tip. So Ken, if he was eating there by himself, would pay 1.2 times X. Paul is buying a sandwich that's a dollar more. So for his sandwich, we write down X plus one and then we add 20% to that. So 100% plus 20 is 120% or 1.2 times X plus one. So that's how much Ken's sandwich is with the tip and that's how much Paul's is. All right, together we can left factor the 1.2 and just do X plus X plus one or two X plus one. So on the right, we have factor step. Let me just highlight that in orange. Okay, some students get lost there. Since there's a 1.2 is a factor here and it's a factor here, we just move that to the left and add the two amounts in the parentheses by addition. All right, so that's left factoring. So that was why, that's why we have two X plus one on the right side. Okay, if you distribute the 1.2 now, you'll get the same answer if we, to group these terms, you'll get 2.4 X plus 1.2. So that's the total for both sandwiches with the 20% tip, but they're gonna split it 50-50 for whatever reason. Uh, Ken is being generous on this day because he'll be paying a little more. Divide that by two and you get 2.4X divided by two is 1.2 and $1.20 divided by two is 60 cents. So the correct answer is 1.2 plus 0.6 is how much each of them will pay if they split the bill evenly. The correct answer was C. Question 18. A food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling was a total of 209 salads and drinks, 
one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? So if we code it with A being a salad sale and B being a drink sale, we know from the second sentence that salads and drinks were 209 sales total. So we write down A plus B equals 209. The second equation we can write is that, well, the sales of the $6.50 salad plus the $2 drinks earned this uh, food truck $836.50. We write down 6.5a plus 2b equals 836.5. What I did next was I went back to the first equation and I it was 1b, so I doubled it. So I rewrote the first equation as 2a plus 2b would be 418 sales. Now we can subtract equation one from equation two and 6.5a minus 2a is 4.5a. In the second column, we have 2.0b minus 2.0b will cancel out. And in the third column, we also subtract and we get 4.5a equals $408.50 after we cancel the drinks. To make the math easier, I since there's 0 0.5, I doubled both sides. And you can write 9a equals 837. Then I know that nine times nine is 81. So nine times 90 is 810 plus 27. Oh, tw nine times three is 27. So then I get A is 93 and the correct answer is B. Okay, when you get to a step like this and you wanna save a few seconds on the test, the other thing is students say, well, if A was 100, then um, we debate 900, but it's not. So it can't be 105. And if it was one less, then it'd be 991. So it can't be C. So B is the only reasonable answer also to save test time. If you estimate, you can eliminate and B is the only reasonable one. Question 19. In the equations above, which are down below here, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively X weeks after July 1st during last summer. What was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? Well, beef is $2.35 plus a quarter for each week. It went up after July 1st. Chicken also was $1.75, but each week after July 1st, oh, because people do picnics and barbecues and 4th of July, and they do summers at the beach and summers at a beach house. So they raise the price of meats. Ah. Chicken will be 40 cents extra each week. When was the price of pound per beef equal to the price of chicken? Looks like chicken rises faster. So we know that beef, 235 plus quarter per pound equals 175 plus 40 cents per pound. Subtract $1.75 from both sides. And we get 60 cents plus 0.25x equals 0.40x subtract 0.25x from both sides, and we get 60 cents equals 0.15x. Divide both sides by 15, just the same as 60 divided by 15 is four. So the correct answer for x is four, but then go back to the stem question because there's an extra step. The price of beef then, and you have to plug in at four weeks after July 1st. So the end of July would be 2035, plus a dollar is 335 per pound. The correct answer was D. Question 20. In the system of equations, if y equals three and uh, y also equals ax squared plus b, the variables a and b are constants. For which of the following values of a and b does the system of equations have exactly two real solutions? Well, there's more than one way to solve this. You can solve it algebraically, putting a three in the left for y. But another way to do it is to graph them separately. Y equals three is going to be this yellow horizontal line. That's y equals three. It's a horizontal line. And ax squared plus b is a parabola. Here's the first parabola highlighted A down below. 
right? So what happens here in the choices is they're changing the A, which is like the aperture, if it's wide or narrow, the parabola. And they're also changing the B value, which has no X attached to it. So when you had it in standard form, that would be normally be the C variable. So to make this less confusing than it is, I wrote down each equation, A, B, C, and D, with A and B in place as the variables. And then I wrote down that A, B, C method that you use for the quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared over 4AC over 2A, minus 4AC over 2A. That formula uses A, B, and C. We also use it for a few other things to analyze parabolas. So for the first equation, A is negative 2, B is 0, and C is 2. For the second equation, a is negative two, b is zero, and c is four. That's the y-intercept, the c value. Here, the aperture is two, b is zero, and the y-intercept is four. Here, it's four x squared, so a is four, b is zero, and the y-intercept is three. The other thing that I wrote down was, well, then the axis or center line for the parabola, we know is at negative b over two a. Well, the B value is zero because there's no, there's no like 2X or 3X or 5X in the middle. There's no middle term. It's not a trinomial. So that means that the center line for each of the four parabolas, A, B, C, and D, will be zero divided by 2A. Well, A is not zero for these, but the point was is that um, the numerator will always be negative B, will always be zero. So the y-axis or x equals zero is the axis of symmetry, and that's where the vertex is. But we know if we plug in zero for each of the four equations, that we'll have zero plus two, so that'll be the vertex at zero, two. Here we'll have zero plus four, so the vertex is at zero, four. Here we'll have zero plus four, the vertex again is at zero, four. And for choice D, we'll have zero plus three, so the vertex is at zero, three. Since this was a negative two A, this was a negative two, this was a positive two, and this was a four. We know that this one opens down from the vertex, this one opens down, choice C opens up, and choice D opens up. So then comparing each of the four sketched parabolas with the horizontal line, Y equals three, we can see that in choice A, well, three is above the vertex, which is at zero, two. So th since the parabola opens down, it will never meet that line. There are no solutions. For choice C, similarly, choice B is the correct answer. For choice C, well, that's y equals three, the yellow line. But since the y-intercept is at four, but it opens up, it will never it will never uh, meet that yellow line. There's no relationship between the parabola and y equals three. And for D where y equals three, well, that is the y-intercept. So that's the vertex of the parabola, but it opens up. So that will have one solution. Going back to the correct answer, choice B, well, that one opens downward because it was negative two X squared, but its vertex is anchored at four. So as it goes left branch and right branch, it will intercept y equals three at two different locations. So the correct answer was B. When A equals negative two and B equals four, the system of equations will have two real solutions. Thank you for watching this video on SAT mathematics. I hope this video is useful to your learning and growth and helps you get a higher score on your SAT.